Um, good afternoon. I hope you can hear me all right. Um, it's really such a privilege to be able to stand before you today and present. Already we've heard so many amazing people using social media for a variety of fantastic causes um, and in really such a cool variety of ways as well. So I'm from the Mitoasis Foundation. If you've been on the website and seen the list of finalists, you won't recognize the logo because we've just gone under some rebranding. So the Mitoasis Foundation has two sets of operations and I'll just speed through them really fast. Um, but we're essentially... Can you hear me now? Okay. Okay, they're red. Can you hear me now? Okay, perfect. I don't think you missed anything too important. So I'm from the My Choices Foundation, and essentially we're about ending um, violence, abuse, and exploitation of women and girls. Um, and we are doing this through two primary operations. Um, one of them is about three and a half years old, and that is the one you see on the, the side, the Operation Peacemaker. And that's focused on ending domestic violence. And it's a hyper hyper-local focus um, of our operations, and so we're based in Hyderabad, and right now our, our operations are uh, limited to Telangana in terms of the services that we provide, and I'll breeze through that in just a second as well. And the second set of operations is Operation Red Alert, and this is an anti-trafficking effort based on three pillars. Um, India's first national helpline to end sex, tra sex trafficking, um, a village level toolkit to educate key stakeholders on how to prevent trafficking, what trafficking is and how to prevent it, and then a mass media campaign. But the, um, only the village level toolkit is rolling out for this year. So all of our, our uh, social media work has been done through Operation Peacemaker. So Operation Peacemaker, so far we've been in existence for three and a half years, just a little over. We have currently just over 60 peacemakers. These are field workers, women who are providing free counseling and legal aid to victims of domestic violence, as well as the perpetrators and their extended families. By the end of this year, we'll have over 100 women in the field working as peacemakers. We've handled, actually, and this statistic is just a little bit old, a few months old, so we've handled over 1,600 um, cases in three and a half years. Um, those are positively handled cases. And we've logged over 65,000 field hours serving these um, victims of domestic violence. Um, and there's a lot of spin-off, obviously, in, in the community and with other prevention work that we do. So onto the campaigns or the social media, the work that we do. So I really hope that, I mean, I haven't been able to go into depth, into detail about what we do, but we are not um, media-based. We aren't about um, mass media campaigns. Um, and awareness is not our goal. Our goal has been always services. So we don't have resources allocated specifically to social media or mass media. Um, so I really hope that that's one point that's very encouraging to every single person here, that no matter what your resources are, social media should be your resource. So we've run, our most successful campaign was the Respect to Protect campaign, and I'll go through the statistics quickly. Um, so we got four of India's most popular cricketers, and Emma Tony is gonna be the fifth, and you'll see his video later this year. So we have had over 650,000 video views with over 1,000 original social media posts. These are people who gave their own pledges for the campaign. Over 64 million hashtag impressions where the hashtag was used or viewed or retweeted and all of that. Um, and we've had over 300 online articles, and this is everybody from CNN, IBN, um, NDTV, UN Women, um, and lots of both local as well as international um, attention on this campaign. And it was also telecasted um, throughout India as well. And there's a lot of um, tribute videos um, on YouTube and all of that. So the key tool that were used here I'm going to have to breeze through. Um, but we just basically made use of social media. We uploaded it to YouTube, and then we used Facebook and Twitter to talk about it and engage conversations on it. And then Google Ad Grants, which every one of you should be eligible for, is $10,000 of free advertisement on Google AdWords every month. Um, and then I just want to end with this. Um, and this is what every NGO must sort of figure out for themselves. Um, and it's, it's how you utilize the social media. So one, we've developed our voice. We've, we're very determined to be sort of positive and uplifting. We're the voice of hope, and that's how we see it. Um, and stories play a strong role in that. We invite action. We're one of the few people who are actually able to link um, those who need help, specifically whether it's um, domestic violence or sexual harassment, with real resources and action for help, um, as well as in, in addition to that, obviously volunteer options as well. We keep the one in mind, every tweet, every, every comment is very important. Every single person is important, whether they are a victim of abuse, or need education on it just for the sake of 
proactively seeking it or whether they might be a perpetrator who thinks we're in the wrong and wants to point out our flaws. We love to engage people in conversation and I think that's really important. And then um, finally, that we are tech savvy. So we don't outsource any of the work that we do on social media. It's our team, it's our counselors, it's the people who really care about the one and, and those who provide services to. I think these are very important parts of how we do what we do. So I just wanted to make sure that I included them. Thank you.